Welcome to Berlin, where I'm with the Peripheral Cortex, my favorite band to pronounce. Uh, let's start from the beginning, guys. So, how did the band, first of all, get together and, uh, yeah, how did it all start and why? Well, I think it was basically we started, uh, yeah, when we moved to Berlin. So, uh, I think me and uh, Chris, we basically moved to Berlin at around the same time, right? I was there a little bit earlier. I had written a couple of songs. I was basically looking for uh, people to do that with, to play them with, so I really wanted to form a band. And then, yeah, in my search in 2013, uh, yeah, basically we met and then, yeah, we started uh, to really search together for the rest of the band, right? So, uh, right. Yeah, so when I came to uh, Berlin before I even moved, uh, the first thing I did was look up uh, what, what kind of bands uh, are looking for drummers. And I heard this guy's stuff and it was pretty crazy. So I decided to contact him and we, yeah, hit it off. And not long after that, uh, we found uh, the other members, the first guitar player, second guitar player, this guy right here, Pat, uh, not much long after that. And uh, then we had the first complete setup. Yeah, but uh, with Pat, uh, yeah, basically he joined for a little bit in 2014, right? And then uh, what happened? What happened there? Can you maybe uh, <laughs> tell us what happened there? No, let, let me think about it. Uh, 2014? I think so, right? Okay, because um, I just barely remember that uh, I was with my father at the Faith No More concert, I think, in Spandau at the Citadelle. And, um, okay. And, um, yeah, I was talking to him like, you know, I, I found this band at eBay Kleinanzeigen, Berlin's Craigslist, and they were they're lo looking for a singer, or not that they don't look for a stereotypical metal singer, but just does growls and grunts and whatever. So I told them that would be a great idea because uh, I'm really tired of just always hearing the same metal over and over again, and I just. Um, yeah, just found the old CD of uh, Ultrageist again and uh, was listening to it constantly. And uh, I thought maybe that would be a great idea to get into a band who is more into avant-garde metal or something like this. And uh, so I joined them and we had a good time, I think, <laughs> until the, the second guitarist who was on the first EP. Uh, yeah, it had sich herausgestellt. How do you say yeah, that? He kind of Developed or yeah, uh, he developed like into a metal elitist who was always uh, on the on the run, or who always looked for uh, for vocals, just for growls and screams. And no, we're a death metal band, and they don't do like clean singing and that and that. And and I was like, okay, well, um, I joined this band for this particular, you know, what point of uh, view, and um, so I left the band. And then another th singer came, came along, and they did the the P then, with the other guitarist. <laughs> and then fun fact, both of them left. So Rob called me and said, "You know what? Uh, you know that Please I come back, man. <laughs> Please come back. Yeah, you know he's away now. Maybe you want to rejoin?" And uh, I said yes, because I was bored. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we we had a great time and uh, developed. Cool songs, I guess, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who's that guy? Ah, that's a good question. Who's this guy? <laughs> well, actually, there used to be a different guitar player called yeah. LJ, and he played uh, on our debut album, which we uh, released earlier earlier this year. In February? Yeah. In February, and he uh, left, actually, recently. And uh, yeah. This is his replacement. That's such a bad word for Gilad. So we welcome Gilad to, to the band. He's the he's our new guitarist, and yeah, he's lovely. Yeah, <laughs> nice to he's be here. awesome. Nice to be here. So. Yeah. yeah. So and he's the only one with a full beard, you know, that fills the yeah, spectrum of the band. A little bit of Perfect uh, metal, you know, a little, yeah. little bit more metal in yeah. the band. In the, in the so. face, a bit more metal in the face. And yeah. he has an awesome bow tie, right? So yeah. that really it's pretty neat, yeah. Yeah. So that kind really convinced us that, that he was the right guy for the band. So. Yeah. I don't have the leather jacket with the like patches and everything, but it, at least I have the beard. Yeah, he has a, like a like a real big mayhem tattoo on his back, so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that makes it good for everything. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> we'll have to see it soon then. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, you mentioned the word uh, avant-garde regarding your music, so I think the cacophonic dance music demands a bit of explaining. Yeah, that was your... Yeah. Uh, you came up with that, man. So. You know, and I don't know where, if it is uh, like this in other countries, but in Germany we have the, the GEMA. Uh, I don't want to explain that shit. We are not in the GEMA, but when you play at a venue and you play a cover or something, uh, you always have to write it down so they can reach it to the GEMA and they uh, the, the venue has to pay something like 15, 20 euros, I don't know, for each cover or something like this, I don't know. Um, and when you fill out that form where you, you know, you write down Peripheral Cortex, a band name and who plays in it and the, the band leader with the address even and then the song titles, whatever. And uh, yeah, then you can come to the point where you should uh, write down the, the genre. We thought of ah, death metal, that's so lame. What are we exactly? Yeah, we are like a tanz band. And then we, <laughs> we discovered the, the, the begriff, the, the term uh, Kakophonische Tanzgruppe. And that's an English cacophonic dance band because, uh, yeah, it's the cacophonic sound of, of death metal and jazz and whatever, noise, exactly. And then uh, you, you try to dance, but it looks like this because you can't figure out what, the, what is the tempo actually and you can't headbang to our music. So I think it fits pretty well. Yeah, every metal band, of course, needs their own genre. But, uh, <laughs> but how did your sound and music actually become so intricate? Yeah, that's a good question. Actually, that's also quite an interesting story. Like, um, I basically wrote the songs and then they were really written with the perspective of, of being very clean and actually quite like straight to the point. But actually that also took quite a different turn as soon this guy, as soon as this guy started to fiddle around. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. I think a lot has to do actually with your, uh, your sauce to, to the songs, basically, I think. Right, yeah. like, um, for example, like, um, uh, I, I played saxophone when I was a kid, you know, until I was 21, and I hadn't played it for like uh, 14 years or so. <laughs> but then this guy, I heard about it, I told him maybe at some uh, occasion or something. And then uh, he just really started to say like, yeah, why don't you sp play saxophone on the album? Yeah. It would be so cool, and uh, yeah. this, you should really do this. And uh, you st started really pushing me, you know, and that really <laughs> yeah. added a completely different dimension to uh, yeah, to the material, basically. So yeah, because uh, I was yeah I was kind of uh, more interested in getting into a new into a new way of, of death metal of metal in, in general, and uh, I thought maybe oh, we need something different. It has to sound different because uh, I was listening to Epitaph, Necrophagist's first album, second album, is it second right? Second album, yeah. Second album. You see, I'm not that <laughs> into it. But uh, I listened to it when it came out and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. And I listened to Arsis and stuff like that. But then it, it went away. So I was, uh, I was done with that genre. I don't know why. Maybe I was bored. And then I joined that band because of uh, bands like Ultrageist, who, uh, who is a, an underground favorite of mine. You should check it out, Ultrageist. Uh, and Phantomas, the band of uh, Mike Patton. And they uh, always mix genres and different instruments. And they created, sometimes for, for certain songs, a really strange sound in metal that you would never hear from someone else. Uh, and Rob said, you know, who oh, well, played saxophone? And I was like, what the fuck? You, you played saxophone and you never told me? You know, Shining, they, they do that, black jazz stuff. Uh, that's such a great album. Uh, why don't we do it? And he was like, oh, well, well. I can't do it anymore, man. <laughs> yeah, I've played Fork it like, like, like 10 years ago <laughs> or something like that. And I was like, yeah, maybe some lines, just some lines. Not that epic, uh, I don't know. Uh, jazz solo, we, we, we don't need that, but uh, we, not, we need some, some other sounds to get a more atmospheric vibe to that 
yeah, to that straight music. Um, yeah, then, then I don't know. Then w there were different points uh, on the album where I said, you know, in the background we need more like a choir or something. And then I came along with a Mellotron sound, and uh, it's not. Yeah, how do we say that? Um, could have been more, but maybe on the second album. Uh, let's see. Okay, talking about God Kaiser Hell album, it's been out for a while now. So, what are your thoughts? Thoughts on the album at the moment? How happy are you with the album? Yeah, I think we are all really happy with how it came out. Um, it was a very lengthy progress uh, process. So we started, I don't remember, recording probably in 2017. And it was finally released early 2020. So it took us a really long time to record everything. And um, the mixing process was also, uh, Tom uh, Fountainhead Geldschläger did, uh, did the mixing. Uh, and he did a really good job in the end. We're very uh, happy with how it, how it turned out and um, how everything came together. But it was uh, bumpy on the road, uh, the whole, the entire process. So I think listening to it now, I think we're we all really uh, happy with the product. Um, we all have uh, ideas, uh, as Patrick just mentioned, for how it can proceed from here. Like the direction has been set, like from more like uh, straight on death metal in the beginning, it kind of developed towards the end of the um, recording process towards more like those avant-garde bits uh, and we are, we're thinking to, to incorporate more of those uh, in the future. But I think the album is really uh, still quite a wild ride to, to listen to and I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. Yeah. Anything to add guys? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess so, right? I am also, yeah, I guess we're, we're all very happy on yeah. Not just much to say about it, I guess. I just listened to it uh, on the road uh, to, the, to the interview. Uh, on the road to the end, uh, my English is like really fucked up today. Um, but I listened to it recently, about two hours ago or something, and uh, just blew my mind, blew my mind again. Yeah. I really dig it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, I also just listened to it on the road on the way here, um, and for me, as like an external part of the band, because I, I wasn't a part of this album, uh, it took me also a while to like really understand what the music is about um, because it's it's a kind of music that takes time to really understand and really to to get your head and ears around off um, and I find it cool it's refreshing like uh, it's something you don't hear often or maybe you don't hear at all I mean how many saxophone parts are there in like tech death metal in Almost none. In general in the metal scene, so uh, it was interesting and also the approach, like you told me after we had like peer rehearsals, you told me about the, your approach to the album um, and to the writing of the album and that was also really cool, like I, I think that's worth mentioning, like uh, the whole jazz approach and the whole like uh, improvisational part, um, so there's also, as said, um, the process was long and there were a lot of interesting um, aspects to the process. Um, Maybe yeah. you want to tell a bit more about like, yeah. your, your... Well, uh, we have the new direction for this uh, next album has been mentioned already a couple times. So what do you think like uh, your effect will be to the band's sound? What will you bring to the table in the future? Um, good question. Um, I mean, um, I'm mostly trying to augment what is already happening so I'm not trying to pull to any direction like I'm not trying to to make calls or something like this I'm um, I'm trying to amplify what is already there um, my background is also a little bit different um, because the death tech metal for me it's completely new I came from a quite different type of music I came from the uh, progressive rock and metal world um, and I'm also studying uh, music production, so for me the whole like production aspect is also interesting and to see what kind of production uh, elements we can use also to achieve um, the sound we're looking for. So maybe not just like the classical instrument playing, but maybe also a little bit of like computer-aided sounds and maybe crazy effects, reversed signals or whatever yes. so 
uh, yeah, but this is still in the process of uh, happening, so hopefully there will be more on that in the future. <laughs> yeah, talking about future, so uh, the album came out in a bit pretty uncertain time. So, uh, first of all, how was that experience and uh, is there any concrete plans already for the future? Yeah, that's also a good question, I guess. Like, uh, of course, when we released the album, it was uh, the 2nd of February, so um, back then everything was all good, you know, like uh, Corona was something ch from China, you know, we thought like, ah, that's probably something that will happen in China, stay in China, you know, I, yeah, I think we were really not yeah, we were really not thinking of anything that would, yeah, or that anything would happen to us or would influence us actually at that point, I think. So, yeah, I don't know. I think we just really weren't realizing it. But I also don't think it really impacted us that much, right? Like, or did it? Well, yeah, I would say we couldn't, yeah. we couldn't do shows. That's it. That's it. Yeah, so yeah. I think um, up until the release, everything seemed OK. And then we released it. And uh, yeah, then it became pretty clear pretty soon it wouldn't be possible to play a release uh, show or a release tour or anything like that. So we had we had some ideas um, to go to the Netherlands, for instance, and uh, play a few shows along the road and things like that. So we had great plans, but uh, very quickly it became uh, clear that uh, none of that would be happening anytime soon. So, of course, even then in March and so on, it was still not clear how long would this continue all through summer and so on. And now we're sitting here in, what is it now, October or so. And uh, it's still impossible to play live. So that's, that's very regrettable in a way. Um, so we haven't been able to play uh, live the, the entire album uh, at all um, and present it uh, to, to anyone. So that's why, uh, <laughs> or let's say that's part of the reason of why we also played live uh, online um, not long ago. And the video's out already. It's a video where, where we played for a random audience um, on chat roulette and chat hub and things like that which uh, <laughs> was an interesting experience in itself different story but, uh, <laughs> yeah i still feel kind of like mutilated uh, from this experience i was honestly saying yeah 